Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at another STL data structure known as the multi-set. So multi-set is related to set in the way that we are able to insert elements into a container. And in this instance, we are going to maintain ordering just like the set as before. But the difference with multi-set versus set is that we're able to have multiple elements in the set, including repeat items. So let's go ahead and summarize some of those differences and look on CPP reference at multi-set. And make sure you stay tuned because in this example, I'm going to also show you how to do a comparison between custom data types, which we haven't looked at so far in our sets. So I'll go ahead and show you that in an example to code, but first to CPP reference. So again, at this point, we've covered set. We've also covered an ordered set, if you're following these in order, and we have the multi-set here. So looking at this, again, it's a data structure that stores a key. And typically, a multi-set is going to be inserted into a red-black tree. So again, this is another sort of logarithmic data structure, meaning the complexity for search, insertion, and removal uh, takes about logarithmic time. Because what does that mean? Well. Anytime I am inserting something and it's going to maintain order in this red black uh, tree structure, or at least that's a common implementation, we will have some sort of ordering. And we did the same sort of visualization in a previous video here. Again, of my elements here, I'm just kind of making these up as I go, uh, but we have some sort of balanced binary tree. And then if I just kind of draw a line down here, creating some uh, intervals here between each of my nodes here, as straight a line as possible. I can see I have one, five, six, seven, eight, nine here. Now the difference is, of course, if I want in this particular data structure, I can add another nine here because this is a multi-set and it will preserve the order, meaning this first nine that I inserted will show up before the second nine. So that's the difference with the multi-set here. Uh, so I'll go ahead and summarize that it's uh, similar to a set, but does allow for duplicates. Okay, so that's going to be the main difference. If you watch the set video, you'll see a lot of the things. Now, something that will become a little bit more meaningful in this particular data structure is things like the count function, for instance, which will count, you know, how many of the same uh, elements that we have here. Okay, uh, so that's the idea here. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at a code example. Um, of creating a multi-set here. Uh, so I've got my main setup, uh, and then I have another little experiment set up for you in a moment here. But let's just go ahead and create multi-set with some integers here. Uh, I'll go ahead and create a set. One, three, five, nine, 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 something like that. Um, and then let's just go ahead and um, let's just go ahead and do a count of nine here. And let's bring in our uh, documentation so we can see that these different uh, functions still exist. So again, we've got all the same different things that we've talked about in uh, previous lessons here, but uh, you know, count is more meaningful. Find is just going to, if we find at least one of the elements uh, that exists here, uh, let's just go ahead and print this out here. And let's go ahead and see here, go ahead and run this. And we've got three nines as expected here. Uh, now we could actually remove a key as well. Let's go ahead and erase uh, an element here. Now, again, we're able to erase just a specific key. That's erase. Uh, so as long as we find the key, and then let's just go ahead and see if it removes all of those elements or just one here, just with a little experiment here. And in fact, it is erasing every single nine here. So just something to keep in mind with the multi-set. Um, so uh, that's the difference between if I'm using uh, this sort of version of the function here, let's actually look at this with the key here, removes all elements with the key equivalent, okay? Um, so if I just want to remove one, let's go ahead and try this with um, uh, using find here, which will give us an iterator here. Uh, so let's just go ahead and do this experiment a few times here, s.find, uh, and we want to find a specific uh, key here. Right, that's going to be our first parameter, 9. And we're returning an iterator here, so I'm just going to use auto to do that. Um, otherwise, it's going to be, well, let's type it out once because we usually like to show you things. Um, you know, iterator it equals s dot find. Okay, these should be equivalent here. Uh, I'll just comment out one so we can see that it uh, works here. 
Uh, whoops, I just have to spell iterator right. Uh, let's go ahead here. Iterator. All right, there we are. All right, and we have it there. And again, just, you know, that's equivalent. These are the cases where I tend to like to use auto <laughs> for those of you, uh, for iterators and, su and such here. Uh, put that semicolon. Okay, now let's go ahead and do our s dot erase uh, at the first position where I find nine. Again, I would probably want to do something like, you know, first just say um, if s dot, and this is a C plus plus twenty feature contains nine. Okay, let's first check if it contains it, then find it, then erase it. Uh, and then let's update our count. Okay, so iterator, you know, again, it's it's just erasing at a specific position. It's not going to erase um, that whole uh, range here, or or at least let's let's check here, right? We should have uh, after I count here, um, you know, one less nine here. So I should get a two. I'll get another two here, and then I'll erase all the other copies of our. Uh, from our multi set. Let's see if that's true. And that is in fact true. Okay, so just a little bit of a difference here, whether you want to remove the key or, you know, one specific uh, instance of the key found here. Okay, uh, so that's the idea here. Uh, let's go ahead and just look at a few other things before we get into our uh, experiment here. And again, we could do uh, interesting things like erase. Um, let me actually go back to erase here. Uh, a range of elements, which I think I showed how to do folks with the lower and upper bound in the set video. So make sure you go ahead and check out the playlist um, for those previous uh, lessons if you want here. Okay, so I think you kind of get the idea with how multi-set works, a little bit of different functionality and some things to be careful with um, with erase here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just keep this experiment um, here. Let me just uh, comment it out for now. And I want to go ahead and show you um, how to work with this um, set when we don't just have integers because I've been doing that with the videos uh, so far with multi set but I want to go ahead and just show you you know something that's less trivial here okay uh, because I think it'll be uh, more interesting for you to see uh, let's maximize the code uh, on our window here just a little bit there all right uh, so anyway here's the new experiment I'll go through it uh, first and foremost I didn't show this explicitly but Multi-set is part of set, so you just include it in that header. Um, okay, so now on to our experiment, though. Uh, what I want to do that's sort of new here is uh, I'm going to just create a custom struct here. Okay, and it's got two fields here, two integers. Okay, just, again, the next, the least trivial thing I can give you other than uh, the custom data types that we have. Uh, I've got a constructor, so we don't want to forget about the things that we've learned about in this series with um, the initialization here on the... Uh, constructor so member initialization um so uh, we can easily just create the fields here and then what's going to be new is this comparison operator here okay so operator we've looked at some of these comparison operators here but in order for set to have an ordering because it, remember it's an ordered data structure set as well as multi-set which i'm showing you multi-set today um we need some way to tell the ordering. Now for this particular ordering, I'm just making up, I'm saying, okay, uh, the left-hand side of the equation would be the field one. So I'm just adding up all of my fields to determine what less than or greater than means. Again, you can think about this in different contexts. Like let's say we have a structure representing a person, right? They might have uh, an age, an ID, hair color, you know, whatever identifiable attributes you want, and you have to sort them somehow, you know, usually by name, uh, but maybe it's uh, last name. And then if the last names are the same, maybe use middle initial, if you have middle initials, uh, first name or other middle names, etc. cetera, um, you know, we have to come up with some sort of <laughs> rule when it's just not uh, a number. So that's what this operator is doing. We need to provide this comparison. Okay. Uh, so I'm just choosing to add up the fields here and then the lesser of them is what I return. So if my current object, well, I'm determining it's going to return true if it is in fact less than the right hand side. Okay, so that's how we get an ordering. That's the idea here. And then I just have a little helper function to uh, print out here. Uh, and then I've got another uh, experiment I'll talk about in a moment. Let me just go ahead and get rid of that. So as long as I provide that operator, I can create my multi set here. Okay, so I'm going to create a few of these objects here. Uh, with just the you know two fields here one six two seven etc. Uh, if it's useful, let me go ahead and uh, split this window here and just again remind you of our structure. Here it is, uh, just two fields. That's all I'm looking at. 
Okay. Uh, I'm going to insert each of these into our multi set. And since it is a ordered data structure, whether I'm using set or multi set, uh, and because it's multi set, I can have duplicates here. So also two and seven, two and seven here. Um, and it is a trivial uh, sort of type. So um, again, the next step to take this further would be to say uh, to implement the equals equals operator for determining if these are equal. But again, these are two integers that's trivially uh, comparable. The, the compiler generated equals equals operator works here. Okay. Uh, so anyways, uh, and then in this code here, uh, I'm just going to print out um, each of these custom objects here. So I'm using for each here, you could use a range based loop again, just showing you some different stuff here uh, for what you might try to do here. So let's go ahead and run this. And now we can see here nine plus negative five. Let's go ahead up into our rule and see that, well, if I add nine uh, and negative five, which is my, you know, one side, that's four, that is indeed less than one and six. So that should be next. And then we have our next two and seven, two and seven, which is a total of nine here. Okay. Uh, just to make this, you know, even uh, more explicit, again, I'm using numbers, but again, this rule is arbitrary depending on the data that you're, uh, you know, come up with, you know, you're coming up with the metric for what less than or greater than means uh, in your particular code here. Uh, but again, just to make this very um, uh, clear here, let's go ahead and just clean this up a tiny bit here. Uh, so I'll have my fields and then let's just go ahead and show field one plus field two, just to make this, you know, even more visual here, you can see the sums here, four, seven, nine, and nine. Okay. So that's the idea here when you come up with a custom data structure. Now, sometimes you won't have, you know, the custom data structure, um, you know, so you won't have this ability to just come in and add a member function, right? You can't always just change public folks code. So what you need to do is provide some sort of Lambda, um, which is in effect a functor. Again, you can check out my uh, video on functors. I'd recommend that in the playlist just to see the how Lambdas are essentially the same thing. But basically, you just come up with your own struct here, compare, which is what I had, and we'll provide that as the second uh, template field here. Okay, so compare. That's the structure. Uh, if I go up to our multi set, right, this is what I am uh, adding in here, the second template parameter, just to be explicit about it. Okay. So now we're going to use this. And um, in order for this to work, we need something that's callable. Okay. So that's what this operator is with the left and the right parentheses. And then I'm looking at my left hand side and my right hand side. Okay. And then I'm just following the same exact rule, except I have to access, you know, the actual field here through left hand side and whatever. Um, so again, this might be something you have to do if you don't have access to um, you know, the actual class or whatever, you can write your own comparison function. You could write this, um, you know, as a Lambda or whatever, but uh, that's the idea. And then I'm going to go ahead and run it. It works uh, just the same here. Okay. Uh, except this time it's using this comparison. Okay. Uh, structure. Now one gotcha to worry uh, or watch out for, right? If you forget this const here, right? It's looking for a specific uh, signature, you might say, Hey, Mike, I, I typed this in, I did the operator, you know, I got the true or false and compared two things, right? Uh, we need to make sure when we're doing the comparison, we're not changing the state of uh, anything. So you, you do need that const there. Um, you will see it if you um, open up the less here, uh, again, just to show you where to learn some of these things here, right? And you kind of carefully look at, um, uh, let me show you this here. Uh, over here, and you get the const expert version too if it's uh, available. So probably should make that const expert actually. Um, but uh, yeah, let's actually let's go do it just to uh, see if we can uh, get away with it here. Again, our suggestion, uh, and in fact, it works here. So even better, right? Const expert as many things as possible. Uh, but that's the idea, right? Um, so here's your possible implementation. Again, just to help you understand and not forget some of these things in case you get some of those scary uh, compiler error messages. So with that said, folks, I hope you enjoyed that lesson on multi-set, learned a few different things, were able to refresh on a few other things like functor, some of the uh, operator overloading and overloading uh, some of the different uh, operators like less than in this particular case. Again, less than with the multi-set and, and the set is kind of interesting because it's sort of acting as a uh, equals equals operator as well, right? If some things, uh, if well, how to, how to sort of draw this out for you one moment. The way to think about this is just to say, you know, if uh, A, so, or let's go ahead and just say our left-hand side, because that's what we're looking at, is less than the right-hand side, or if that's not true, 
Uh, and it's not also true that the right hand side is less than the left hand side. Um, then that's you know basically saying that they're equal. Okay, so <laughs> so we can kind of get away with the multi set, kind of an interesting uh, operator with um, the less than uh, operator here as we look down here. Okay. Um, so with that said, anyways, I'll go ahead and wrap up the lesson here. You can find the lesson, as always, in other courses on C++. This is totally free if you just want to track your progress with these lessons. Um, and anyways, thanks as always for your time. Hopefully you're enjoying learning about that and a little bit of a less trivial example, um, again, uh, as mentioned. So with that said, folks, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. And thank you for your time and attention.